it was a clash of style and tempers. Arguello, the conquistador, the, the, the hero figure. The hook was probably it was one of the best finishes I've ever seen in boxing. Once he really gets you hurt. You don't beat an Aaron Pryor and you don't beat an Alexis Arguello until you absolutely destroy either fighter. Alexis Arguello was the most popular man from Nicaragua, a country that began the 1970s with a massive earthquake and ended it with a bloody civil war. The Nicaraguan people had only Alexis to look at as a source of national pride. He was, by all accounts, the nicest man in boxing history. Really only one thing every Nicaraguan could agree on, the handsome and charismatic 29-year-old Campion. Also, unquestionably, one of the hardest punchers of all time. He's here to tempt history, to break Henry Armstrong's record, and to win the title in his fourth weight class. Across the ring was the lineal 140-pound champion, Aaron the Hawk Pryor, grew up in a violent broken home in the slums of Cincinnati. He's homeless out of preference by his pre-teens. Better to sleep on a quiet park bench than to listen to the war at home. Aaron was taken in by the parents of a friend. That friend lived above a boxing gym. Aaron got curious. What kills the cat only proved Aaron's toughness and tenacity. He was wild and unorthodox. Certainly using his, uh, his mouth more. Talking he fought as a frenzied blur of activity. Aaron came to rule 140 pounds like a mad king. Aaron! Aaron! Their immortal meeting in Miami's Orange Bowl was fraught with violence from the start. Due to the war in Nicaragua, Alexis was forced to flee his home. The week of the fight, an armed man tried to force his way into the locker room. The civil war at home had come for him overseas. After the man was arrested, security was heightened for the event. In the other camp, Aaron had grown even more erratic than his usual self. He started disappearing from camp for days at a time, only to show back up, spar 36 rounds with horrifying intensity, before again disappearing back into the lurid Miami night. Aaron loved boxing because it allowed him to lose himself in a fight. No time for the painful past when the present wants your blood. Who's the hungrier fighter, you think? I don't know that at 1.6 and 1.5 million, you can say anybody's hungry. Aaron Pryor wants a recognition. Alexis Aguayo is fighting for history. That gives you a heck of an incentive that money can. He responded to the ringing bells like a German Shepherd out of a police SUV. The fight begins with one of the best opening rounds in boxing history. Pryor puts on intense pressure. Arguello circles off the ropes to make distance. Catches Pryor walking onto his lethal right hand. They crackle off like a fireworks display in the night. As Pryor backs out, shoulder rolling away a right as he goes. Aaron smiles that damned smile. He'd found a fight he could get lost in. Alex went to the body and was able to hurt Pryor for a while. Very effective in Pryor's uh, style. Pryor is now slowed down just for the moment. The sheer zeal of Aaron Pryor is something to see. Aaron's sheer intensity was enough to overwhelm and fold most men. They started out third fast and began the first round. When they went to 
When that didn't work, out came one of the most unusual bag of tricks in boxing history. He was a short fighter who favored the 1-2-1 one, one combination to close distance. He could jab and move. He could fight inside, and his use of angles and reflexive head movement was unreal. That's a rarity. I've seen it a couple of times, once in your fight with Tommy Hearns, but it is rare that a fight lives up to the press clippings. So far, this one has, albeit it is early. Arguello fighting off the ropes and fighting very effectively off the ropes. Arguello. For the first time, at the end of round two, we hear the controversial statement that would hang over the rest of a brilliant fight. You're the boss, don't you? Give me a, give me a, give me a drink, man, a mix. One that I mix, two stick to it. Cross up, cross up. You're the boss now, roll! Alexis Arguello is the textbook of Tall. He was calm and poised. He knew Pryor's fanatic reputation. He adjusts accordingly on the inside, finding all the little ways to make just enough room to land his mortar shell of a right hand. It's very difficult to hit, too, just with that head roll that he has. He just makes a very tough target. That was an overhand right at the bell. At range, his uppercuts to the body made Pryor pay for closing the gap. Everything he landed carried the unnatural snap El Flaco Explosivo was known to generate. More than once, it shook Aaron to his boots. Or it should have. It was a good left hook by Arguello, but it did not hurt Pryor, who smiles back at him. At times, a bomb landing made Aaron box and move laterally, staying off the straight line of the sniper. It saw him use a lead right hand as a disguise to get off the line of the tall man. He'd crash in with it or step past as he threw it, only to whip around into a vicious combo as Alexis was still turning to face him. Round six saw the first blood. Aaron kept chipping away with intensity and volume. Alexis would land a few clean bombs in response. Well, he's fighting a bigger man too. And there's a right hand and that might have hurt Pryor. The fans were transfixed on the sheer spectacle of it. Lost in the visceral technique of the moment rather than filling out cards. True fans only care who wins in a passing sense. Aaron proved he was more than just the heat-seeking missile he was billed as. He could box as well as brawl. Arguello proved just as capable at any range or pace the Mad King could show him. From there was a brutal war of attrition and stamina. Boxing is a high-paced game of life, changing wealth and bodily harm. Whenever the stakes get that high, rules become suggestions, especially among people who never cared much for rules to begin with. As the double-digit rounds roll by, the poise and pride of Nicaragua begins to take over. The uppercut to the body, an overhand right as powerful as they are pinpoint. There's a hard right hand by Arguello, but Pryor did not take one step back. Combination by Arguello again, the uppercut and the overhand right. Back with another overhand right. Pryor smiles at him at the... Aaron Pryor, lost in the frenzy, smiles that damned smile and stares him down as the bell rings. Round 13 sees Alexis land the straight right hand he's been looking for all night. There's a right hand, snaps the head back. The crack of the punch echoed over a screaming, teeming crowd. Aaron's eyes stare straight up at ring lights. Aaron darts away jabbing and ducking unbothered because he's been through worse because he's Aaron Pryor and most people aren't. What happens between round 13 and 14 is one of the most controversial incidents in modern boxing. Panama Lewis calls again for the black bottle, the one I mixed. Give me that bottle. The one I mixed. Yeah. Okay? Come on. Come on. Okay, when these two rounds, yeah? All right, 
which immediately raises eyebrows for the sheer sketchiness of the sentence. Theories are round to this day about what was in that bottle. Some say stimulants, some say antihistamines, some say peppermint schnapps. That he had to win these next two rounds. I'm not sure that that's completely accurate, but I would think it would be a pretty good idea. And a left hand snaps the head of Arguello back. Arguello is wobbling. Whatever it was hit Aaron Pryor like spinach hits Popeye. Aaron comes out and brutally destroys Arguello in one of the most violent finishing sequences in boxing history. He lands dozens of punches too hard, too fast, and too accurate to finish Alexis in the 14th round. Accusations about the black bottle fly. Panama Lewis gets his license pulled for removing padding from another of his fighter's gloves. Despite the controversy, it didn't stop Aaron Pryor versus Alexis Arguello from being voted as the single best fight of the 1980s and one of the 10 greatest fights of all time. And then I can take my times to pick a guy that was a mechanic like to throw around. Stay around.